Nisqually. Well, <laughs> boats Nisqually Marines going to bring down to that intersection? Roger. All right, we will uh, we will start the uh, uh, the uh, September 9th uh, Gull Lake Trail Steering Committee meeting. Uh, we have uh, four present. Uh, Bill uh, Meyer will not be here, but Ross, Tessa, and Paula, and myself are here. We have a quorum, and so uh, we are ready to start the agenda. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of the um, minutes, meeting minutes. The uh, May May minutes. So I'd entertain a motion to approve the May minutes. I make a motion to approve the May minutes. Okay, and a second by. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Signify. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Uh, there's uh, any uh, additions to the agenda, as presented. If not, we will continue on. Um, be no open forum since there's no one here in the audience. The old business, Amber will uh, update us on engineering and grants. So Amber, I turn it over to you. Perfect, thank you. Um, it has been a long time, so I'm gonna yeah. try and remember as much as I can on this. Um, so we last met in May. Shortly after that, no. um, Niswa and Lakeshore asked Woodseth to pause design um, until we received funding. So they have not been doing any design work since then. Um, however, they have been helping us with uh, the uh, legal descriptions for uh, the land acquisition. So we are still kind of working through some of that, um, specifically to Nisswa. We've had the city attorney um, take a look at it. Woodseth is writing up the legal descriptions and we should be getting to a place to get the appraisals done very soon. Um, so that's what Woodseth has been working on. But as far as design, they have not been doing anything. Um, once we know more specifically when funding will be released, I want them to update us on a timeline. Mm -hmm. The goal is to still go to bid um, around like late winter, get it, get it to bid probably by March is the goal, um, which we've communicated to Woodseth. Um, and they said as soon as funding does get released and they get the go ahead, they will do what they need to do to kind of keep on pace as best as possible. I question. See a question. Well, the, the legislative package that passed, the legacy funding that passed this year did not include our funding? It did include the funding. So like we, the so reason that, we don't- So it should be available now, July 1st. We need to complete the contract. Well, you can still, I, I manage legacy grants for another organization. You can still do work after July 1st, um, but you know you can't get any reimbursements until your contracts are in place. Okay. Okay, I will double check on that one and if that, and then we'll give Woodseth the, the go ahead. Um, we do need to get an archeological survey done along Hazelwood. So that is a uh, phase one study. So we either, they're calling go for one to get utilities marked. Um, and then that should be scheduled within the next, hopefully week or two. Um, and then it'll be another, she estimated two to three weeks after that till we get the results. So who it does the DNR manage your, your contracts or who manages it? Yeah. Yes, DNR. Yeah, okay. So you should have a DNR contracts manager assigned yes. to you already. Yep. I would check yeah. with her, but yeah. I'm pretty sure you, you can go ahead with work. You just can't ask for reimbursements okay. till your contract is done. Okay, I will, that, yes, I will definitely check into that because that would be a- That would be helpful. That'd be huge. Yeah, okay, I, I got a question on, let's go back to the appraisal part. Yep. So uh, that, that's, uh, that, that expense will be covered by the city and not by the, uh, uh, by, by the legacy funds or any other grants. Correct. correct? Okay, so that that can I mean you could proceed as like you said you're uh, on uh, that's underway and and who actually is involved with the uh, 
uh, contact, you know, contacting the uh, the uh, property owners. Are you, you'll be one of- Yeah, Seth? myself and Jenny uh, will be the primary people. Woodseth will be there to support um, with any technical descriptions of the land. Um, Do you meet with them, each individual? We have not, we're not at that place yet, but no, that I mean, be... how do you, so how do you set that up? You, you, uh, you set up a meeting with each in, individual property owner. Uh, do you go out to the, the, the property or they come in here or how does that work? Jenny and I will navigate that one. We have not gotten that to that point yet. Um, the landowners do have the opportunity to be present during the appraisal. So we're kind of just waiting for the legal description, get a finalized get with the appraiser okay. and then we will figure out, I think we can be semi-flexible to the property owners. I think best case scenario is to meet at the property. Um, so we're all standing there looking at the right. same thing yeah. um, that would be my recommendation. Okay. okay, thank you. I appreciate uh, knowing that. Yeah, so um, yeah, Woodseth is working on finalizing the description then we can get the appraisals um, while that's all going on the archeological survey is being scheduled and hopefully a couple of weeks out for getting the results of that. Um, so th all those things are slowly in motion. Um, moving on to, we kind of already touched on this one and I will, I'll definitely follow up to the specifics, Paula on that yeah. and make sure that, cause I know Lakeshore is very, <laughs> We have to. Well, check on it. Yeah. I, you know, I could be wrong, but. Um, I mean, you sure. say that and it does sound familiar, yeah, sure. but it all gets wishy-washy sometimes. Um, so yeah, I will follow up and make sure we get that correct and mm -hmm. not, not okay. delay if we don't need to. No, because they, <laughs> the DNR can take a very long time to get those contracts out. Yes, the last time I talked to him, he said, as soon as I get um, the archaeological survey back, he'll be able to finalize both contracts, is what he told me last time I talked to him. So. Okay. All right. So. Um, and then just one other little note on that one the DNR did start construction on the public water access mm -hmm. next to Nissau Lake Park. They started on the 23rd. So that project is. Why did they have to take down all the trees? Are they tiling that area in there? It's um, like a wasteland. Parking. Have you seen it? Parking? They need yeah. that much? It's They're going to have that much parking there? Boat and a trailer. Oh. Yeah. It's. Oh. A significant parking lot. I got a hunch that landing will be used. Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. All right. A any other uh, grant updates? That's it. That is all I have at this time. Okay. All right. Moving on to new business. You uh, sent uh, sent us a uh, a draft of the uh, the start of a trail policy. Um, so this is going to be kind of an ongoing thing. You have, you um, have yeah. So say. you guys have seen this several several different times in different ways. Um, some of the feedback that we've received, um, one being expand on the definition of a bicycle. So there um, is a more in depth look of bicycle. Um, we also had kind of a forward thinking. Um, kind of piece of feedback, including electric assisted bicycles. Um, we added segways. And I know another piece um, that I've thought about, and I think Paula, you mentioned as well, is electric scooters. scooters. Or even um, scooters, period, because yeah. to me, my grandkids well, consider a Skateboard with Skateboards a are all over. a scooter. Yeah, and that would should not be. And when I was in Duluth, they had, and I, you know, remember there's rentable scooters that other cities and communities have, and that may or may not be a thing that ever comes here. But knowing that we already have kids that use electric scooters, you can see that. And if that is something we want to allow, as we're thinking, you know future wise as well. So those are some of the comments that um, we've that I can remember receiving over the past 
several several looks at this. Um, and so the only thing that was not updated in this draft would be to allow electric scooters, skateboards, um, hoverboards, are those, those are still a thing, right? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> um, so that was the only thing that's not reflected as being allowed um, as part of something to consider. But the Segway, Segways were put in, electric assist bicycles were put in, and golf carts were taken off. So those are the primary changes you're seeing in this draft. Golf carts were taken off of, oh, you've got it scratched out. Yep. And for what reason? Because the legacy does not okay. view it. Um, and so until the if and when the master plan is amended and yep. approved to show mm -hmm. golf carts on the trail. Um, have it would you, be my recommendation to not have it in there. Yeah, that's not, I, I get, um, have, have you talked to the other, uh, the other uh, tra trail, uh, the other ju the trail jurisdictions about the golf cart issue? Um, yes and no, we have not all met. Um, and I have shared this policy with Lakeshore. Um, my hope is that we get this to a kind of resting place and we can share it with the other communities for them to kind of see what we've tentatively agreed upon, mm -hmm. um, and then work from, from there. So I've had a conversation with Rob Mason mm -hmm. down in East Gull Lake, you know, the, the city administrator who's had golf carts on the East Gull Lake uh, trail since its inception in 2009 with no issues. And, and uh, he's of the opinion that um, we should not do anything. What do you mean not do with anything? golf carts? Just let it go. That's his. I'm saying this is his opinion. He says that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, pursue it. We shouldn't change the uh, the master plan. We should just not do anything. Well, was East East Coast Lake was not funded with legacy correct. funds. That's so correct. That that's a little different yeah. there because they're not. Yeah, I understand that, but they, they they've got some uh, some ex some extensions coming up. Uh, that they will be applying for. I, I'm just saying that's what Rob Mason sure. right now is, and I don't know if he's shared that with uh, with with uh, with the other uh, with the other entities, and, and obviously he hasn't shared that with you. But I've I've talked to him in the last couple of months, and, and because he's aware of of the issue and and yep. says that we should just do nothing and not even put it like if you scratched it out here. You haven't got it in here and just see what happens. If it comes up, then we deal with it. Correct. That's what he's, that's what he said. If, 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 if it comes an issue, then we deal with it. So he's suggesting that you don't say it's included, but you don't just say do it's nothing. excluded. Yeah, exactly. This may be a dumb question, but what's the master plan? Is that the plan all, yeah. everybody has to follow Lakeshore, well, Fairview? The or master plan was master plan, or the, is it? Uh, there? There is a master plan, our, uh, and uh, Ross, and and it was developed by uh, by Lakeshore. They're, they're the ones that came up with the master plan and and started the whole darn thing, and and so, and, but it included us and further south. Well, to get uh, legacy funding, they required that you have a regional trail designation, and part of that re regional trail designation is that you have a master, master plan. plan. Okay. So and they got the master. So if East Gull Lake gets a grant, then the master plan, they'd have to follow the master plan? Yeah, they yeah, should be yeah. following it now. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I've well, always- That answers the question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been my, I believe that if, if once this whole trail system is finished, that it would be best to have a joint powers agreement between all the entities and have to make sure the master plan is consistent mm -hmm. and also to look at uh, consistent maintenance along the trail because there could be consistent there could be efficiencies oh yeah absolutely efficiencies to have one yeah. organization that takes care of the yeah. maintenance of the whole trail but i guess that's a little bit ahead of yeah ahead of the game right now 
What no. does the master plan say about golf carts? Nothing. 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 Zippo. Nothing. It doesn't even. It doesn't even uh, use the term. Um, I'm not sure. Multi, I'd have to go back and look at it again. I'm not even sure it's got the term multi. It's multi-use is in there, the, but it's, the way that the legacy interprets our master plan that it's multi-use to non-motorized. Nope, that it's motorized by seasons, so it's motorized in the winter with snowmobiles. Oh yeah, That's exactly right. Interpret yeah. the multi-use yeah. motorized. Multi-use is the wet being. Winter. Okay. Yeah. Same as the Paul Bunyan intro. Yeah. 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 Um, so getting back to your trail policy, uh, Amber, um, you at this point under the definition section, you've uh, identified, uh, I think, nine definitions. Yep. A lot of this was taken either from the DNR's website or state statute. Okay. So most of the definitions came from. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I I would like I I'm planning on spending some more time on this area, uh, but I I think it's uh, like it's a work in progress, and I think we're probably going to be coming up with some more definitions and also uh, the tra trail use as to what 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 we need to identify, and also I believe that we should. Uh, define what is not an acceptable use. Yeah. More so than what's already yeah. listed. Here. That, that's what's in here now. What does um, Lakeshore's um, policy look like? They don't have one. They don't. Uh -oh. Not to my knowledge. I don't think anyone they, else they, has they, one. And they're not working on a, a trail policy? You know, if they're working on one, they're not. Terry never mentioned it. How about Fairview Township? Mm -mm. Hmm. Um, so on page three here, um, motorized vehicles, this is where it begins listing what is not allowed. So Roger, are you looking for something more in depth, so no motor vehicles other than snowmobile emergency vehicles or NISWA maintenance vehicles. Um, and then motorized bicycles, motorized foot scooters, depending on where we want that to land. Motorized vehicles such as all terrain vehicles, off highway motorcycles, or off highway vehicles are prohibited. What else would you like to see listed as not? Yeah, allowed? okay. I, I, I'm going to get back to you on that. Okay, and then C is horseback riding, also prohibited. Yeah, I'm going to spend more time on this, and I'll get back to you okay. with a more definite. Uh, yeah, some something uh, more specific. Yeah, is, if, I whatever, will. if I there's something have, specific we want listed. I do have a question, like the motorized bicycles and the foot scooters. Why would we not want them on the trail? Is there a specific reason? I mean, to me, the trail is to be safe, mm -hmm. and they're safer on the trail than they are. Oh. Yeah, um, road. and I'm thinking when it says motorized bicycle, like a dirt bike versus an electric assist. So they have different, I yeah. don't know what unit they're so, measured yeah. in, but there's going to be different speeds. Um, and then foot scooters are, I would say prim primarily electric. Those e-bikes are, have ratings. Yep. So there's do. different, maybe putting only class Class one. One. Class one is, is the only bikes one. would be right. allowed on the trails because that's a speed and power thing. Yep. So yeah. right. if we're yep. more specific, then it it might help with that. Um, that and then right that now it has happened. a power output of not more than a thousand watts and incapable of propelling past twenty miles an hour. Oh, well, which the is electronic a, which scooters is class can't one. That fast. Right. So that's what's listed for the yeah. e-bike. Yeah. And you, did you pull that off of the DNR website? Yeah, I pulled this off of either state statute yeah, or DNR. Okay. I'm not, I don't yeah. remember which one I pulled. Yeah, okay. All right, that's one. fine. Okay. Yeah, I think we should be consistent with the, uh, with DN, with the uh, DNR, uh, which essentially is a Paul Bunyan trail regulation. So it confuses people if we're going to do something. Oh, yeah. There. None of this I came up with on my own. Okay. <laughs> it's all taken directly from one of those two okay. places. 
So the electric assisted scooters can't go that fast. So I don't know. Is there a reason why they wouldn't be allowed? No. And Paula and I thought of that one after I had already sent this one out. Okay. One of the times. Okay. Um, so we're going to change so that. So if around. everyone's in agreement of moving yeah. electric scooters, mm -hmm. then I will move that one. Um, and then I read it as like motorized bicycle is more like a dirt bike versus a dirt e. bike would be classified as a motorcycle wouldn't it no not if it's human powered yeah a dirt oh okay dirt a, a motorized dirt bike yes yeah. well, it says motorized yes, exactly. bicycle you're thinking of a bike that you uh, a mountain bike a, a mountain bike is it, a lot <laughs> yeah. of people call mountain bike dirt bikes oh, but, oh no, no. So, okay you're talking about a motorized dirt bike okay uh so because we also have to keep I this think, a readable length as well. Yes, and it should be concise and yeah. So yeah. if this doesn't summarize most of what is prohibited, like if we can try and find general categories, because it's pretty difficult to list every single thing that is allowed or not allowed. Would should we just to touch base? Should we be kind of talking to Lakeshore about adopting a policy so you don't have all of a sudden, this is fine on this side of the line, but right. once you cross yeah. this side, my of the hope line, is that we can get to an agreement and share it with the other communities okay. for their, mm -hmm, yeah, you know, for them to. Sure. Since I don't think most of them have anything yet, um, then they can either add you know, to it, add whatever. to it, subtract from it, yeah, kind of give us their plan. feedback, and we can kind of yeah. start morphing into a cohesive. And I do have a correct on the a correction on the top of page three. Under a general, mm -hmm. the t the term uh, roller blading, yep, should be changed to inline skating. Roller blade is a brand name. Sure. So change that to inline skating. Okay. Well, okay. Consider this a work of progress. We got plenty of time to work on it, and I I know I will personally spend some time with on that section. Probably have roller skiing on there, Roger. Roller skiing should be, uh, yeah, that's that's a permitted oh, use. Right. Um, okay, anything else under that trail policy? If not, we'll move to winter trail grooming. I think we've had a discussion already. Um, is there anything else we need to add to that yes, discussion? Because we need to discuss it during our meeting. Okay, um, all right, we need to So I, a gentleman from the Gull Lake Trail Drifters came in, and I wanna say July, give or take, um, and with a very basic inquiry of if the trail allows snowmobiles. The trail allows snowmobiles. Um, I wanted to put this on here and revisit the discussion of trail grooming. I believe it's been determined that it will not be plowed um, so we will not remove the snow. Well, where can they have a specific concern of where the trail crosses 371 on the western side? There's a development going on, and they're not sure if their trail will be able to go through that area. So they're just kind of putting out a basic inquiry, trying to figure out where maybe some alternative trail routes could be. Um, questions I asked them is if there would be any cost for the city, which there would be none if they groomed it. And I asked what equipment they would use to groom it. And they have a smaller, um, smaller piece of equipment that would do it, not the big, big groomer. So those were, that's about as far as that discussion and dialogue mm. ever went, but I wanted to bring it to you guys as well to see if there was an appetite to have any portion of the trail groomed i think personally i think and i think as a it would be important to figure out a way how to get the snowmobiles across the highway and that trail obviously is going away um and so i i mean i just think in the winter time we get snowmobiles uptown and and that connects them with a lot that you know we should I don't know if it's our responsibility to, but I think we should take a harder look at it to try and figure out if if we can make that happen. 
And the trail does allow snowmobiles. So regardless of whether they groom it or not, the snowmobile can be on the trail. So the question is yeah. grooming or the no grooming, grooming not well, snowmobile grooming or of, no snowmobile. Yeah, as somebody who lives on Lower Roy Lake Road, right on the corner of Lower Roy Lake Road and, and uh, Cove Trail, I really would be opposed to seeing any grooming on Lower Roy Lake Road in Hazelwood. Um, that would put people, I mean, Yes, they can still go there, but to tell you the truth, I've only seen one snowmobile in six years that has gone along that that ditch. Um, uh, you mean your di the ditch? Yeah, by my you. house. But if you groom it, that's just going to uh, you know in, in, invite people to use it more if it's groomed. That trail is going to go right in people's front yards and right along the sides of their houses. That would be a Fortunately, I don't know if you're going to get away from it, especially if the one trail goes away, that'll be their only connection unless we can come up with a different, unless we can come up with an alternative. Well, and I think I don't snowmobile, but I'm just guessing that if people are just out for fun, that's not the most enjoyable route crossing driveways and ups and downs and things like that, yes. that if that might just be a way to get from A to B, well, but still, for local people, if but, becomes, if, but if that becomes a, a, a part that of that trail a system. That huge public contentious uh, issue. Correct. Oh, um, I, I'm not, I mean, I, because- I agree with you, Paul. I just don't, I'm saying, or, or then we need to plan an alternative somehow, you know, see if we can come up with an alternative one. I don't know if that's running down 77 to the intersection there or- Well, and I think, uh, you know, looking, Again, I don't snowmobile, nor do I know exactly where all these trails go. I'm just kind of judging by the map. Um, you know, if there's a way on 13 to get to 77, or if there's a way to kind of use the Gull Lake chain and Nisswa Lake to get to town. Well, where do they go now? That's what the red lines they, are on the map. Cross, they so cross very difficult to read. I couldn't get a better map As today you here. As down 77, there's the little fused junction for that the power company has. It's all fenced yep. in. Mm -hmm. Right across from the road there, that trail goes back in the woods and it goes kind of kind of along Grandview's property through Bulberg's property. Yep. Cool. And it goes back and it kind of came around and it comes out right on the corner of Hazelwood. So they cross Hazelwood. Oh, and then to they the come, inner. then they come and they cross oh. the highway by. It's this. They they come up Common uh, Commons right Drive. Nope, nope. It's all through. Yeah. It was all through the woods up yeah, until so. when Joe built his building. There, it was all through yeah. the woods. So it came oh. right on the corner. They crossed at the corner, and then they went to the highway. They crossed the highway, crossed the median, yeah. and then the trail went from Subway the ditch. Yeah, to back behind and yep. over to Eco. Yep. Hmm. To Felbunny Trail. Yep. Does it, is it now, did it go on your city's property? Nope. Hmm. No. Nope. But we won't be able to not, not stop snowmobiles on the trail correctly. Correct. Well, I, no. I agree. That's I true. understand. It's just a grooming of it. We can't stop them on the trail, yeah. but I'm just saying if it was groomed along a residential area, that would just encourage people. And, you know, having the trail near our homes is a, positive selling point but having snowmobiles roaring by there in the winter would be a negative selling yeah point. okay so what's the plan here i mean do we have to to does someone need to talk to uh copper creek about the how, how does this whole it's thing it's not happen? our responsibility to determine the, the snowmobile, snowmobile trail Club's route responsibility to it figure out right I'm only, all I'm saying is it would be our benefit mm -hmm. to try and work with somebody to figure out how to get this. It would be to Niswa's benefit to get snowmobiles to Niswa. And mm -hmm. it would be our benefit to have another trail that was off of, off of this trail. Cause otherwise I think, you know. Another trail think, off of this trail. And can we honestly say they can't groom it or can we, do we have the power to say that? It'd be for them to like make this on like their map and get funding to do the grooming and things like that. Because if this is a DNR state trail, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't know whose tradition that falls. We may not even have a say in it. No, it's, it's our trail. So we yeah, can they, say, no, you do can't they groom the Paul be, Bunyan yeah. trail? They do. Oh, they yes. do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so it'd be, uh, it would be the uh, 
a, an agreement between the Gall Lake drifters and the city of Nisswa, if they, if they were gonna use the, Nisswa, uh, the Gall Lake Trail, right? We would have we to- Because we are the owner, the city of Nisswa is the owner of that trail, correct? Yes. Okay, so the drifters would have to make some uh, an easement contract like they do with any private property owner uh, to use that trail, a portion of it. Yeah, and I and I think that um, if this if that if this if it was decided to groom it along Lower Roy Lake Road and the people you're going to be negotiating by buying easements on their property, if they ask you that question and you say yes, it's going to be groomed, that could create a that going could, to, could it's create a definitely problem. Definitely going to be an issue them. if we groom, and that becomes part of that trail system. Hazelwood. I don't know if would would Roy Lake actually be involved. Uh, Ross, it, just thinking out, I mean, Roy Lake is the road wouldn't be in Bali, it'd be Hazelwood. That would be the issue, wouldn't it? Where's the well, development you, that they're concerned? connect them over. And if the trail goes along Roy Lake, then they would follow. I think either way, you're going to get someone goes on the trail because they're going to find that other trail to be closed. Well, you said that they wanted, they were looking for an alternate route because there's development going on. Is, is, is the development Joe's Copper Creek, yeah. Joe's development property. there on yeah. Hazelwood. That's the, oh. that's the yeah. issue. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's and it know, may or may not but they may be, be an able, issue, but they're just looking. But the thing of it is, even if it's not, I think it's going to be temporary. I mean, it's going to be like, okay, this winter we can get Correct. by, but as more developments, you're going to go in there, the city might put a road in there. Um, you're gonna that's gonna become, you know. So up until we you hit the Copper Creek property. The rest of that to 77, is that Boberg's property? It is, isn't yes. it? Because that's yeah, why yes. we couldn't get it. that to it, is we tried to deal with Boberg and he wouldn't let us, he well, wouldn't deal with us. Smallville trail go through there. So that's the, but, yeah. You know, they may be developing too and you're gonna have a city road that might be going, the city road will go through there, I think for sure. <laughs> Yeah, they want to get Hazelwood closed off. So yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying that that L long range gonna do something's there, I going think to happen. Going to be temporary. Well, and this is like I said at the beginning, extremely preliminary. Yeah. We don't know what yep. they want, but I just wanted to get this on our radar yeah. for something right. for us to start. Yeah. Well, maybe we could thinking about respond to them that we are willing to work with them to find some alternatives, but the the uh, having groom trails close to residential homes is not desirable yeah i mean that that decision is going to have to be made by the city council ultimately well, if that heck yeah to that. Uh, they would probably the look city. to you guys for a recommendation yep. that's exactly what they would do is look yep. at this committee for um, as to whether we would want to investigate grooming or not grooming um, but yeah, I do think we need to be mindful that there, we're going to have to help find routes for. Why couldn't it be groomed from along 77 and continue up 77, uh, if Grandview would allow that, do they own? Well, and there is an ax in, and all the way up to where, uh, along 77 is part of their trail system. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't know if that's groomed or not. I don't know that much about I don't how they work this, it. But the ditches aren't necessarily I don't think, groomed. Yeah. But they there's might a, there's pop, a few points that them get pretty narrow. Well, and they so might pop over they, they likely will pop over onto the trail on 77 instead of riding the ditch. Well, there should be I a would. problem with that. I mean, I mean, along 77. I'm just afraid, Paul, it groomed or not, the traffic will go that way if, if that's... The trail, the groomed Snowmobile Trail, though, is on the south side of 77. Yep. Okay. And then... It the, is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, well, that's, you know, maybe that's the reality, Ross, that, that, it, that it will be used, but I sure wouldn't want to see it encouraged by grooming it. Yeah, if they groom yeah. it, then it's going to be put on their maps. You know, I think goes, that so everybody's going to know um, it's a valuable trail and they'll be using it all the time. Just, yeah. it's just food for thought. If we can come up with an alternative yeah. that, that gets some, 
again, too, I think it's still important to get snowmobiles to Missoula. Yeah, once they lose the Bolberg property off of seventy uh, off of seventy seven, then they've got they've they definitely I got an issue, right? So, Big time. Yeah, I just think it would be in in a lot of the city's best interest to try. There's not much we can do because it's not our jurisdiction right. or authority, but to help encourage it and do what we can do to help. Well, it, so it's really up to the drifters right now to try to deal with uh, to try to deal with the Copper Creek uh, temper on the short range program, you get them through this this winter and next. Yep. Who knows? Yep, I just wanted to get this okay. on everyone's and radar that this may be a thing coming down so at some junction. I'd, I'd like to go back and and talk about uh, that that trail use in the winter time, especially along Hazelwood. Um, I, I know we've said it's groomed for, it won't be groomed. So that means that it, it, you know, you could, if you wanted to, you could, you could ski on it. I don't know why anybody would want to ski, but you know, and obviously until it really gets deep into snow, you could, walkers could use that. So, uh, you know, there are some trails in the winter time where they do plow, uh, up, up, uh, the, uh, the, blacktop and use it and have it for winter walking. Uh, and, and that could be uh, a use along uh, Hazelwood is, is, to, is to have it plowed for winter walking from the, uh, from the uh, uh, tunnel to the junction of, of uh, Lower Roy Lake Road. As a walking well, path. Well, if you're going to plow, why would you want to stop there? You could continue on, I suppose, but I'm saying at least uh, at least take it that far. That's you a could, lot of expense. Well, I'm just saying that's that could be a. a, a, a I understand that would have to be a, obviously the city. Does the city have a plow that would that's that small? They don't, would do they? It could that would plow a, a ten foot. Cat. Almost have to have a. A blower. And then you, where are you going to put the snow? You're going to put the snow in the front yard. City of Baxter uses a snowplow truck to plow all their walking Do trails. They? Yep. A snowplow truck? Well, not a big one, but like a pickup pick truck. truck. Pick with up a truck. Plow on it. Really? Yep. Well, I suppose are the, are the blades, uh, so that trail would be 10 foot wide. Ross is, is yeah, what are the blades? Most blades are eight, nine feet. Okay. But how do they, especially, I'm just thinking along. Hazelwood, just because I plow, I mean, you end up with high banks. Mm -hmm. There's some people's driveways that we can't even, you know, you'd have to, if, you'd if have to heavy plow. snow, we can't plow them anymore. We're done. You'd have we to got, throw it in, got, in that five foot medium between. Yeah, but that fills up really, really quickly. Yeah, I suppose. I would say would. that's not an avenue we want to explore. Okay, well, I'm just saying, I'm just, I just, I just, I just want to bring it up because no, that's yep. bring it up, but I think that would have multiple issues of. How do you deal with the snow? Where, where yeah. are you going to put it? Yeah. Well, and you never know if someone's going to shovel their own front, too. I don't anticipate that, but. You mean the, the trail in front of a house, uh, people could go out and shovel it in front of their house? I I'm not asking could. them to, but I'm not saying that you. they I won't. Not You're not that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, and especially if we've got snowmobiles, too, then we don't want them running on the fair tar. Yeah, um, that right. would be bad for trail maintenance. Yes. All right, so uh, that issue is uh, ongoing. <laughs> so just keep us posted if you hear anything from Gull Lake Drifters on yep. uh, any proposals, any any uh, tentative plans. Okay, if not, is there any other uh, discussion items? If not, will we have a meeting in October? We do have one scheduled. Is that a definite? Um, it's as needed, but I will be gone the second Thursday. So I have two alternative dates listed. Oh, one yeah. being October 11th or October 21st. I believe the 11th is that Tuesday, to Monday, Monday night, Monday, the 11th or Thursday, the 21st. If you guys had a preference, should we need to have a meeting? Well, we could talk about that next month. That, could make or that is not next, next month. month. That is our next meeting. Not I, yeah. I will not be here on October 11th or no, at whatever the next uh, the second either, Tuesday either is. Either day would work. The 14th. Yeah. Ross is good yeah. with either day. Yeah. yeah. Either day. Okay. okay. So send us a, a reminder to we'll make do. that decision. 
Okay. If not, any other discussion, comments? If not, meetings adjourned. Okay, okay. <laughs>